Are we ready, my friends? I, I think we are. All right. Here, I have to find our slideshow now. <laughs> In all of your open tabs. I know, I've always got so much going on on my screen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there we go. Yeah. All right, so thanks everybody for joining us again today on this lovely snowy day. And, and I'm glad that we already had a little bit of sharing and conversation here. I think that, that that's awesome because that's really what we like, what we really like to see. So I'm Gretchen and I have my partner Alicia with us today. And Hi everyone. Yeah, well, we'll start with um, our traditional territory acknowledgement and we needed to change up the picture because uh, it's snowy outside today. So um, wherever you might be coming from uh, might be different, but for the Olympic Kent District School Board, uh, the land on which all of our schools are um, is the traditional territory of the Chippewa, also known as the Ojibwe, the Chippewa, Odawa, Potawatomi and Delaware Nations. And during the land acknowledgement, I think it's always a good time to kind of stop and think about what you're grateful for that the land gives to us. And this picture here is actually um, uh, some teachers from P.E. McGibbon. We went out to Walpole Island to do um, some tapping of uh, maple trees to make some maple syrup. So I just wanted to share that, you know, like that's a, a, a really great gift that, that the earth gives to us. So just like to share that. And it's so nice to see that snow on the ground again out there. It was yeah. Nice when it's cold and it's snowy and you can kind of get out there and get some fresh air and enjoy that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. And it's nice. It's peaceful, right? And it kind of reminds us, you know, like um, things are sleeping right now. And even though we're so busy at work, it kind of reminds us to, you know, slow it down a bit and try to to rest as well, just like the, the plants and some of the animals are resting as well. Absolutely. So, so as usual, where our focus is um, maintaining the FDK program, you know, like we want to make sure that we're we're thinking about the four frames and ways to to keep kids learning through play, and we want to share lots of ideas. Um, last week was great. All the ideas that were being shared, I I loved it. I love seeing what everybody's doing, and um, and we we've got lots to share today. And also thinking about documentation and how we're able to um document students learning and the evidence of their learning through the the virtual world right and this is a conversation that comes up with our team quite often right like how how are we able to to make sure that we are documenting that learning so alicia do you want, think, you want to talk about this slide here sure so um just to kind of go along with what we're saying about documentation we know that report cards are looming um, and that's another thing that kind of is on our plate right now. So it kind of lends nicely to taking care of yourself and getting outside and trying to, you know, take a big breath and just take in where we're at. Um, and also, we really understand that this kind of report card is going to be a little bit different, obviously, than what you're used to. Um, but just remembering that your professional judgment, you know your students, um, what you can gather from your students in this is going to be just as valuable as if you were in the classroom. Yes, it might look a little bit different and yet have, have to kind of dig a little deeper, but um, let's just try to stay positive because remember positive positivity always wins. Okay? Mm. So just trying to keep in that positive um, headspace. And even though some days are harder than others, mm. but everyone's and thinking doing a great job. And thinking about that too, um, and in the um, the communications of learning is what our kids do, right? Let's talk about the good things that they are able to do, and maybe it's they're finally able to unmute their mic when they want to talk, right? Or they're you know able to participate in the class discussions online or something, or they finally just felt comfortable to turn off. I mean, turn their camera on, right? Like those those are things that we can share in the, the communications of learning, so yeah. Yeah, and that belonging and contributing piece, they still need to belong in the virtual space. So mm -hmm. those are all opportunities to kind of expand. And again, maybe not what you would be um, commenting on if you were in the class, but this right now is our reality mm -hmm. and that's okay. Yep. We are doing what we can. Yeah, 
So we just, you know, we've already uh, shared a bit about what we know or what we are wondering about Kinder Start, but um, we'd also like to just kind of open it up right now for any sharing about um, any successes or challenges since we spoke to you last. Um, and especially thinking about or in regards to um, that documentation piece or having students showing what they know um, using Seesaw, if anybody wants to share that or just share any successes that they, they want to brighten our days with. We love those. Mm -hmm. Anybody? Going once. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, think, us, sorry. I think for us, Foz and I, we had started out um, sort of really, really slow and uh, with our Google Meets and just giving them little bits. And then I think we were sort of nervous to kind of expand and we were nervous that our kids and we had thrown it back to the parents um, as far as what the need was and where they were and um, what their kids were able to tolerate. And we were nervous to kind of expand. And we have done that now. We've added some more. We've added another Google Meet. Um, we're trying to incorporate more curriculum and uh, sort of challenging our students. And we're finding that our students are really rising to that challenge and that our families are really enjoying um, some of the stuff that we're throwing out there um, to the point where we're getting some uh, feedback from parents and give us more work. We've done all our work. Our kids are in the mood. They're in the groove. So can you throw some more work our way? So um, we're just finding that our, our families have really sort of risen to that sort of challenge where we sort of baby stepped it and weren't sure how this was going to go. But um, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. And I think that it is important to remember, right? Like this is new for everybody. And I like that you, you know, you, you are trying new things, but having those baby steps is okay because at the starting of the school year in September, right? We don't throw the kids into everything right away. You know, we kind of work up the things. We work on those routines and everything first. So yeah, so thank you for sharing that. I, think I just wanted to share too, oh, sorry, Alicia, that um, oh, I think we're starting to embrace them being at home and what we can do that's going to um, allow everybody to be part of it rather than look at them being okay we're not in the classroom we can't do this we can't do that okay they're at home so what is a challenge that they can do at home that they couldn't do before when they were at school so things like we were talking about having a, a virtual chocolate day and doing things like um, getting pudding and putting it on a tray and doing their letters that way or a popcorn day and doing popcorn words and things that they can do at home that we aren't able to do in the classroom because of allergies or um, different activities. So I think that is a challenge that we've come across and we're expanding on. To add to that, we also, we're kind of our classroom, how we run it um, normally in brick and mortar is, you know, we let the kids guide us and we let the day guide us and we kind of have a flow on where we're going, but really it's very child centered and um, it's, we're structured, but then we're not structured. And it seems that we've been very structured online. And one thing today, we woke up and there was a snowstorm and um, we, told them okay you know what we want to go play in the snow we want to explore the snow we want to do this we're not ready for this so the first block we're going to run normal but second block we're changing it up so what i sent you is getting thrown out and here, we're going to do this instead and we had everyone come back for a second block we had everyone engage for a second block basically it was very open-ended we kind of gave them ideas on the fly on what they could do outside in the snow and just getting the stuff back right now as we're seeing what's coming in on Seesaw, it's amazing how much the kids are engaged and we're engaged in what happened when we kind of let it, you know, it just changed. And was it a success today? Maybe. Was it a challenge? Sure. Like it was kind of a bit of a both, but um, we're kind of just rolling with it. And that's kind of where we got back today, at least some of our spontaneity. Yeah, that's awesome. And that's what I really remember about being in the classroom is that spontaneity, right? And and how fun it was and that you know that you are noticing that and acknowledging that it's 
you know, and you're getting that back, that feeling back. I think that's really cool. So yeah, thank you for sharing that. I think too, um, it reminds me a little bit of, you know, when there's this beautiful day outside or the kids are a little bit squirrely in the class, like we're going to extend our outdoor play and maybe something that um, a student notices outside, maybe kind of peaks a, a bit of an inquiry and, you know, the same thing, you might have something come back. Maybe the kids noticed, you know, as Carissa was talking about last week, um, footprints in the snow or different markings in the snow. And maybe that's going to guide some learning for the next few days. And maybe, you know, you do some investigating with that, or maybe you bring out different materials and try to like write messages in the snow and what makes different um, markings in the snow. And so who knows where they can take it. And kids often are more creative than we are. And so they can kind of take those ideas and then we can run with them as we may. So it's okay to be flexible and to drop everything. And I love that you guys were able to do that. I just wanna say it was so nice also as a success to see um, some of the children in our classes that have older siblings and you can, they're taking pictures of things that they're doing with their classes as well. So one of the students in my class, they made Olaf today, but then the older student had to make a volcano in the snow. So then it was interesting to see some of those extra things to expand on their inquiry and then introduce some things based on what they're doing with their older siblings. Yeah, that's awesome. And it's nice sometimes to engage siblings too, because that's something that might not always happen. Um, when we're in the school, sometimes, uh, you know, especially the little ones, they're kind of in their own little section of the school. So it's nice when they do, they can interact like that. Okay, Anything else? We'll, move on. we'll move on now. Yeah. Okay. All right. So for this slide, we had, it was actually uh, Tressa and Molly to talk about connecting to the home environment. Um, so activity is, uh, normally it's it's a read aloud, The Rabbit That Belongs to Emily Brown, and the kids love it. Um, it's one of my favorite books, so it's the one of the ones where you do all the different voices and things like that, and you can, you can get really creative with it. Um, but I made a connection to it to myself because it's a book that I've read with my children um, from the beginning, from when they were little. And when my daughter was able to read, she was Emily Brown, the voice of Emily Brown. And my husband did all the fun voices. I was narrator and my son was the person who listened to it. And so I shared this book with the, the students. And then at the end, I show a picture of my, my whole family reading this book with my son being four. Um, at the time watching it and being engaged in the, in the listening of it. So then we bring it to the kids and we ask, what is your Stanley? What is your favorite? So the Stanley is the rabbit's name. And um, so we're asking, what's your favorite toy? So this really, um, originally we were thinking this was going to be a language activity, but um, it's really proven to us that it's actually more of a belonging and contributing in the fact that it's talking about like their positive um, self image, their sense of self, and they can kind of make a connection to home. And so these children, they drew pictures of their favorite stuff fee and they um, were able to uh, sound out the words and um, work on the sight words um, as they kind of went through this. We've done it before in, the, in previous years, but what was neat was seeing it done virtually. We felt like there was a better connection with them being at home and in the moment and being able to take us to their room or they're bringing things to us to show us what their Stanley is and able to communicate with us. A lot of times, you know, it's only what can fit in your backpack when you bring things to school. By the time we get to the story, they forget what they wanted to tell us about their Stanley or their stuffy. So we really saw that they were demonstrating a positive sense of their own identity through this activity. Mm -hmm. I think it's nice too. It makes me think um, about creating that kind of safe space as well. And, you know, that self-regulation and being and your own well-being in your own home and things that, um, you know, even when the world around us feels a little uneasy, uh, that this is something that they can connect with. Um, my own son, don't ever tell him I told you this, any of you, but he is <laughs> going to be 12 and he still has like his um, his is a pillow. It's um, 
that he, but it's his go-to, like anytime he goes somewhere, he sneaks it in his backpack, even if he doesn't bring it. So that whole self of like, what makes you feel comfortable? What is something that you can do maybe when you're feeling a little bit uptight uh, is also a nice connection. At the end of the clip, um, it actually, I actually have all of our stuffies and I show um, my daughter's teddy bear that she's had since the beginning of time and my son's dog that he's had from the beginning of time and then I show my doll my doll from when I was a child that holly hobby I had from years ago and it's got like it's all ratted and tatted and all that kind of stuff and the fact that the kids can make connections to it and then you we also saw like as Molly mentioned things that wouldn't happen normally in the classroom we saw parents talking about theirs and and bringing those in and it was kind of a neat kind of whole sense of kind of family and belonging. So good. And you can extend this. There's lots of other things that you can do um, moving forward. And I think we have another um, team here, it's Diana and Allison um, from McGibbon. Uh, also did some learning with their friends. You guys want to share about this? Sure. Um, okay. So we noticed a lot of our friends were kind of bringing items to our meet. Sometimes you could see it in the background. So we thought Maybe we would extend that and have them bring a stuffy to the meet, kind of that belonging and contributing where they get to share stuff that's in their home. So we kind of started off with, we always start our meet with a little bit of a sharing piece. So they started off with sharing their stuffy with us. And then we thought we would do a little bit of measuring, kind of, you know, get them up, get them moving. And just that quick assessment, do they understand these measurement words we're talking about? So we started off with sending them off to find an item in their home that was taller than their stuffy and then they all had to bring it back and show us and to put the whole you know when you measure it has to start at the bottom and it has to measure up so they were you know we could quickly see if they understood taller than so then we would send them off a second time you know get them up and moving again can they find something that is shorter than their stuffy and then they held it up to compare and then we gave them a trickier one can you find something the exact same size as your stuffy so we just to get that measurement, get them up and moving. And then our, the last one we talked about, we got into more, you know, measuring using non-standard units. So then we had them find us their stuffy and then find some kind of non-standard unit they could measure with and measure their stuffy that way as well. And we found our kids loved it. They loved bringing their stuffies and they loved that getting up and moving and going and finding all of the different objects in their house. Yeah, and with that activity there, you know, you've got the mathematical literacy behaviors and um, the self regulation and well being, you know, just through that one activity there and helping them feel, um, you know, comfortable and bringing that stuff and talking about it with, with the class is awesome. So I think that this is a really great activity here. Thank you. I think to that letting them get up and move when they're, you know, they're not constantly sitting in front of a screen, you know, yeah. go and find something. So they're getting up and they're moving and they're excited to come back and to share it with you. So that sometimes increases engagement as well. And we also give our parents like a, oh, sorry, Dana. I just say we give our parents a bit of a heads up to if they need to have certain things ready for the meet, like we let them know to have non-standard units ready and in a stuffed animal ready so they weren't scrambling to get all these materials before, like as the meet was going on, just so parents were aware and were able to be prepared for the meet with their child. For sure. And that movement piece was, is a very deliberate part of our, of our Google Meets. We found that it really does help when we can incorporate that movement piece like we had last week with the women who did the, the movement cards and that really it's very to what to look at what we're doing and so I feel like I'm on my hands able again. I was just going to say, well, Diana's <laughs> currently lost her stability for just a moment. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, yeah. When you when you restabilize there, Diana, maybe uh, we could have you um, explain that again. So yes, technology, right? It's wonderful. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll we'll move on to. Um, oh, are you back, Diana? Are you back? Yeah, it keeps happening. It's ready for a sleep. The oh Wi-Fi is ready for her. To sleep. <laughs> okay, so yeah, we'll move on to um to this slide here, and here we're talking with um. Am I there? No. Terry, Terry here. Yep. Okay. I'm here. Okay, yeah. So we have Carrie here to talk about some ex science experiments that she did with her class. And um, Carrie's from the virtual school. And um, when um, Alicia and I were looking at this earlier, you know, we were really talking about how we loved seeing the quotes from the students. And I think that's just such an awesome part of documentation right there is, is what the students are saying and, and their conversations. So will you just talk about this a little bit for us, Carrie? Uh, yeah, so basically what we did was we let our families know in advance, <clears throat> excuse me, that we would be doing a science experiment. Um, it was optional, they could partake in their homes or they could just watch me do the experiment. Um, we actually had quite a few of our parents participate and children participate in the experiment. I think there was only two out of 20 that didn't. So we set it up, we showed them the materials that we were gonna use. I asked a simple question, what do you think Madame's gonna do with all these? Um, the other Madame, my teaching partner wrote down the quotes for that. And then we kind of basically step-by-step -step walked through the experiment together while they did it at home, as well as myself. And then we stopped and we asked another question. What do you think, or what do you see happening? And again, we took quotes from some of the other children that maybe hadn't answered the first question. So everybody got a quote went, written down. And then after that, to expand it again, we asked them to draw their observations. So as you can see, the start of the experiment, their observations after the experiment or during the experiment, one of the children even five hours later took a picture and posted it. So they kept the experiment over time mm -hmm. and shared it with us in their seesaw. And it went really good. And mm -hmm. you know what, to be honest, I did. So the two pictures there on the right were my experiment that the children were observing that didn't do it at home. But the first time I did it, it didn't work out so well. So then we did it again. And the second time it worked out better. And then again at home, you could see the kids, which ones were working, which ones weren't working, what was turning into what colors and just the excitement and the family dynamic was amazing because they had siblings coming in and interacting, parents helping and interacting and science at home is really neat. I think that making it a whole, like building that home connection with the learning connection is so important. And I think we have a really great opportunity to, you know, bring families into the learning and get them excited about it together. Cause that's going to set the foundation moving forward when we do, you know, go back, maybe that sharing of, you know, what did you do today at school? Maybe that'll kind of amplify it a little bit. Mm -hmm. I also love in these statements, like the, what do you see happening? Like that one student who said like blue and yellow mixed together, make green. And that's an authentic observation that they saw that happen. And again, mm -hmm. all of this is so great for that documentation piece. And you can kind of see um, them coming to conclusions and there's lots of authentic conversations here that I'm sure happened throughout. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah and I, nice. when I would write report cards or communications of learning um, when I was in FDK, I would I would include quotes in there. And so like the one about Madame, it's turning into Violet, right? Like you can say that they that's use that quote in there and say that they are using the language during science experiments. And I think that that's a really good um, just, uh, you know, thing to to include in in the report cards. I think that's awesome. Absolutely. And that's, that's kind of what we were looking for when we asked them the questions and made sure we went through and asked each child for a response. So we had those quotes to write in their communication and learning. Awesome. 
That's so great. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. You're welcome. Okay, so um, for this one here, so some math math sharing. Let's talk about math here. And again, we have Alice and, and Diana. We'll see how Diane is doing there. <laughs> All right, am I on? Yep. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so these are Diana. Diana, maybe turn off your Diana, maybe turn off your camera. That might help. Oh. Where she is um, able to measure herself using non standard units of measure and using that math language like taller and shorter. And, and what does that look like for you? Um, we did a sort of a, a school day for each one of our students and we did a porch drop off and um what we did was that we put in a ten, uh, a 10 frame and a whiteboard and marker some crayons their um uh scrapbook like their um, journal book their name book that type of thing so that they'd have things to practice and that's something that they bring to our google meet every morning so the whiteboard has proven to be very effective in being able to kind of see what they know really quickly and um, and also for them to, pra to practice on. So when we did, for instance, this morning, we talked, we had our morning message and we try to keep our schedule as close as we would do it in the classroom. So we do a morning message in the morning and we, our letter of the week is P. So they were, so uh, Mrs. Foz did her jam board and, and on her, with her morning message. And then she was able to, um, circle the P's and then we counted them. And then she had said, while I'm, you know, circling them, you can be practicing P's. And after we discovered that there were six, it was interesting when they showed their uh, whiteboard, some children just practiced like an upper and lower case. And some children were able just to count out six and make six P's. So it's really interesting once you throw it out there, uh, how they kind of interpret your words and what the expectation is. So it's really neat to be able to use that for a piece of assessment as far as um, our report cards are concerned. And again, just um, in the last picture, just sort of seeing what they're able to come up with. Uh, we use their little creative minds. Our letter of the week was O. So it was sort of like, what can you find that you could create to make the letter O uh, uppercase and lowercase? So this is just what she's showing in this uh, final picture there. And isn't that a sign of our times that she used a cell phone cord or an <laughs> iPad charger to Absolutely. create that O? I mean, how many do we have those hanging around our house, right? <laughs> <laughs> so cute. And I um, just added kind of in that last one, I'm sorry, Gretchen, yep. um, just some, prompts, you know, that we can um, get students thinking. And also the more we model, the more parents will pick up on some of that language. So, you know, with them measuring with the pillow, taller or shorter, how many pillows tall are you? What else could you measure with? So kind of extending that learning. Um, and can you create shapes using materials from your home? What shapes did you create? Can you create another one? Can you use the same materials? Do you need something different? What do you notice about the lines? So just kind of giving all of those prompts that kind of extend it. And then the students are going to kind of meet you where you're, where they're at. And uh, when they're ready to extend it, they will. And if, you know, that's going to be good evidence there as well. Mm -hmm. um, we kind of did the same sort of idea with the literacy, with the literacy piece. You can see, uh, again, we're talking about the letter O. So it's like, what can you draw? Um, that starts with the letter O. Um, the middle picture, we asked our children at the beginning of the week to make a bingo card using nine, nine squares. So at the beginning of the week, they had to make a bingo card. And then on Friday, we said we were going to do letter bingo with the letters that we knew. So they were able to put in those squares the letters that we knew from, I think it was A to O or A to P. And um, so they did that. Now, the funny thing was, um, because they had their, their school packages with them, um, some of our 
children didn't have their bingo cards, even though that they were sort of reminded uh, to do that during the week. Um, so they were able to quickly do it on a whiteboard so that they were able to create that. So no child was sort of like, I know we talked last week about having the right materials or enough materials in your home to be able to do the lessons that we're trying to um, carry through. So having that board just seems to be instrumental that they've been able to draw something up quick and parents would be able to, you know, support them in that really quickly so that they'd be able to participate. So, um, and then the last, our last picture is um, same kind of idea. What can you use in your house to create uh, letters? And the letter we were, we were focusing on that week was the letter N. So she's super proud that she's able to use different materials in her home to, and I think she was also eating her, her goldfish as well. She was going along there. So, <laughs> I just wanted to add the bingo idea. We actually got that from my daughter's teacher. That's something my daughter's teacher does with them quite a few times. And it worked out great. So that's for our whole bingo. I just want to give the credit to my daughter's teacher. That's where that bingo card came from. Awesome that we can share right across uh, all different classes. Share those ideas. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yep. Awesome. And you could do that with, you know, numbers or you could have them, you know, create um, different ways you can show a number uh, and play those bingo games. Who doesn't love bingo? Absolutely. Well, something familiar and something that, like you said, that parents can carry through the whole, you know, throughout for lots of different things that they can play on a Friday night with their, with their kids, right? Make a few bingo cards and yeah. have snacks. For sure. Molly has a question. She's wondering if you guys separate the SKs and the JKs in um, small groups when doing bingo. Whoa, we whoa, haven't, whoa. Yeah, so we haven't done it yet. We've right now we're still on whole groups. Um, yeah. We have we have a smaller class. We only have about maybe 15 children showing up to meet and some of our SKs are still a bit lower. So we still as of now do whole groups, but that is actually something um, Diana and I have talked about is starting maybe some small groups to do a little bit more focused learning with some of our ones that are ready for sight words and some of our ones that still really need that letter push. Absolutely. Baby steps. Yeah. That's good. For sure. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Good. Thanks guys. Okay. So this one is my slide. So I will share about this. Okay. So I've been doing some, uh, Lots of class uh, meets the past couple of weeks. And even before we were out, um, I was visiting classes by Google Meet. And these are just some things that I'm able to do with classes. I brought most of my books home from my office. And so I join classes and we, I read them stories and I share stories and teachings and pictures of my family. And so today I was in with um, Perry Deguire and Carissa Hool. And we talked a little bit about powwows. And so what, what, how it came forward was Carissa emailed me and said, oh, we're listening to some music and we heard some powwow music and my kids recognized it. Is there anything that you can join us to talk about? And I said, oh, I have the perfect book. And so when I come, I, um, I teach some Ojibwe words. So the story powwow powwow is about powwows, but it's um, uh, like kind of about the importance of dogs and how, um, and a, a girl in the story has a dream about dogs at the powwow. So I taught the kids how to say Nimush uh, in Ojibwe, or dog in Ojibwe, which is Nimush. And they all tried it. And then I give them a seesaw activity. And um, there's some videos about powwows in there. There's movement um, videos in there as well. Um, and it's just a nice way for students to be able to, to share what they know about powwows and there were kids today who said, you know, oh, I know how to say this in Ojibwe, or I've been to a powwow and this is what it was like, or my dad's from Kettle Point, right? So really nice that the kids were able to see that um, part of them reflected in, in their lesson that day at school. So um, I, I love visiting and I will come and visit and I will share these with your class as well too. So, and I usually have a seesaw activity that goes along. And there's usually a writing or, and record your voice saying the Ojibwe words because the kids really love it too. And, and learning a new language is, is pretty cool to them too. So, and they love it if they already know some too. When I come in and they say, oh, we know how to say bujou. So that's just uh, something that I can share. And 
this was another one. And um, I really like this because this is a really nice story. And I might have visited some classes already who are in here because um, we've been doing, I've been doing this one a lot. And so um, it talks about the Amaltic, which is a coat that uh, Inuit people wear up in Nunavut. And it has a big hood on the back that a baby can ride in. So then I teach them some Ojibwe words for the hat. So we kwan, mjikawanak, uh, mittens, and then a coat, these kawagan, scarf, nam kawagan, and boots, uh, makazanan. And then the kids are encouraged to say those words and record their voices. And so um, I love this one here, this koala bear, or this koala with, um, with the mittens on, and then the kid's voice recording is on. I don't have the recording, so just have to imagine a cute little voice in mjikawanak. And um, this picture here is, um, you know, a little guy who, who was doing, doing all of it. And it was really cool when I came because he volunteered to sing the song that I taught him because he already knew it from being at home. And I was talking to his mom afterwards and she said he just loved it. He felt so good. He felt so good that he was able to share the song that he already knew and he was able to share um, his, his hat. And I had something, I tried to add it. Let me see, I might need to just exit and go back in. Here. Oh yeah, there we go. So I just added it like a second ago. This was something that one of the moms was able to connect to the story, the Tik Nogan or the cradle board. And so she um, shared a picture of her son's uh, Tik Nogan that he, she would carry him around it on her back when, when he was born. So there's really that home connection there as well. So that belonging and contributing. And it was just something really awesome to help her, her son feel really connected to the class. So yeah. That's something else that I can do. Okay, so yeah, Michelle, I don't know her class love. Which, who, what's your last name, Michelle? I have visited so many classes and I can't remember everybody. <laughs> or what school? Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, awesome. Thank you. No, I, and uh, I'm glad that, you know, you were able to, to do that activity with the class and the kids love it. So um Lots of connections being able to be made this way as well. So if you're interested, send me an email. And I'm I'm thinking of trying to do a large one because I know that there are a lot of classes who who would like this one together. So uh, if there's interest in that, I will try to get that together in the next week or two as well. It's so cool when the kids get to learn about you know different traditions, different cultures, different yes. ways that are outside of their. Um, you know, yeah. understanding or what they're used to. Like, I always yeah. think it's so intriguing for them. So giving them yeah. this exposure, especially when they're so little is great. Yeah. And yeah. And it's good too, with... because then they know that like from an early age, that there's a value in that there's value in that language, there's value in these stories. And then on the other side too, we see, you know, our, our little friend here and he felt, you know, like, he belong there his his culture and his language is being included so i think it's a really important uh step that that you know a lot of people are taking in their classrooms so, yeah good next um okay so this is one that actually um we were thinking about ways right now. I remember when we went kind of into the early stages with COVID um, last March, um, and there was a lot of you know notes being sent for the essential workers and um, just lots of kind of kindness being shared around our communities. It made me kind of think uh, of ways that we can encourage our kiddos to be kind. And that little note in the middle um, actually came from my son who knows that even though my house is an absolute bombshell because there are not enough hours in the day um, that he appreciates everything that he's doing and I found this little note um, on the kitchen counter when I woke up and I thought oh my goodness how nice is it to have this little secret surprise so um, I started thinking about an activity that maybe we could do with our students to help them to appreciate and kind of leave these secret little warm and fuzzy messages um, for either people around their home or, you know, out on, if they have like a sidewalk in front of their house, I know the painted rocks were kind of a thing. Um, and just brainstorming with kids who we can give a little bit of positivity and kindness to. 
um, on the right hand side there, I just um, started kind of a little message about um, brainstorming with your kids. Like who could we leave these secret messages for? Obviously we have to be careful um, for everyone's safety with being out, but you know, if your students are someone who rely on, you know, taking a city bus, for example, to get places or um, maybe have to go to the grocery store with mom or dad or grandma or grandpa, like what are some things that we could kind of make a little picture for or just make them feel like a part of the community and be appreciative. So this was an activity, um, again, that I just kind of thought might be nice. Um, could even have them write a little love letter to their mom or dad or brother or sister mm -hmm. or their pet or their stuffy or even to someone in their class. I remember being in a virtual classroom and um, the kids were writing little notes to each other and like holding them up to each other during the meet. And I thought that was so sweet. So just mm -hmm. a simple way to kind of encourage that belonging and contributing and also to kind of pump everybody up and make them realize, um, you know, that we are okay, even though this is a bit of a tough go. Yeah. Yeah. With and that's that, that feeling of being grateful too, right? Yeah. Like being, being grateful and, and contributing. Yeah, For yeah. sure. And it was also brought, if you skip to that next slide, um, this week is the great kindness challenge. So I'm going to give kudos to Ashley Faber, who is one of the virtual teachers. Um, and in our meeting today, she was talking that this week is the great kindness challenge. So it runs from the 25th to the 29th, but you can obviously continue it. Um, you can sign up. I just Googled the Great Kindness Challenge. You can sign your class up and it gives activities for uh, you to do simple activities um, to kind of spread some positivity. Um, that might be nice if you are interested in that. So I didn't have a chance to kind of check it out too much, but if you're interested, check that out. Um, and we'd love to hear about it if you did participate because you can register for that. Thank you. And just one more activity um, based on this book, What I Like About Me. Um, it's a book that, you know, we tend to sometimes use at the beginning of the school year to appreciate differences and to kind of talk about how everyone's different. But I think it's really important now that we've been out of school for a while to make sure that we're kind of reiterating that whole belonging and contributing piece. Uh, on YouTube, you can find this book being read aloud if you don't have it. Um, it's just a simple book of people celebrating what they love about themselves. And, and my idea behind this is kind of just to have your students share what they love about themselves, whether it is something that is, you know, physical about them or their kindness or that they love to dance and their feet make tapping noises. Um, so just kind of celebrating what they love about themselves. And I always love the idea of being able to compile all of their images and maybe make, you know, a a book out of it and kind of share it on Seesaw. It's nice to see everybody um, come together. I did create a Seesaw activity for this. It is in the shared drive. Nope. It is in the community library in Seesaw um, called What I Like About Me. If you are interested, you can go and check it out. It is up there, um, has instructions and has just a template for that. Yeah, thank you. Oh, yeah, I forgot to say that too. I put um, some seesaw activities into um, in the school and district library as well. And um, if you search Pow Wow, that's the Pow Wow Pow Wow one. Um, but I will come and read it and teach Ojibwe words and talk about my dogs too. So, yeah. So, and thank you to everybody who shares your lessons in the, um, in the banks too. I think that's something very um, important to point out that you know we make those for for people and I love all the things that I see in there sometimes I go in it and just check it out to see what what awesome things are in there so, yeah I went on last night there's a lot of good stuff in there and the nice thing is remember we talked about those kind of three dots if you you know check the heart and you like it um, and it saves to your own personal seesaw library uh, then you can go in and you can edit it. You can change the voice to your own voice. You can tweak it to match the needs of your mm -hmm. students. So don't um, always reinvent the wheel. If you want to go in and borrow something, we love what we're doing right now and sharing ideas and that's why we do it. So there's lots mm -hmm. of stuff in there. Awesome. Okay, so what do you think, Ms. Shank? Do we have well, 
Yeah, I think let's um, let's maybe open it up. Uh, Leanna saying, yes, I totally agree with that. There are some awesome activities that are in there. Um, talking about Stantia Wilson and all of the great activities. They loved her choice boards about dinosaurs, dogs, and cats. So yeah, there's tons of stuff that are super intriguing. Um, so yeah, if anyone I think has any questions or wanted to share or anything. Do you want to address this or? No, maybe let's save okay. that. Yeah, we will. We'll save that. <laughs> yeah. So if there's anything before we head off, again, the recorded sessions are there on the YouTube channel, mm -hmm. uh, LKDSB Zoom PD, or also they are now posted on the blog uh, if you are looking for them. Um, and again, reach out to myself or Gretchen if you have any questions or want us to come and join you or want to troubleshoot, we're here for you. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you to everybody who shared today and thank you to everybody who came today too. For sure. We hope that you have a wonderful week mm -hmm. and enjoy. Thanks, the ladies. No. Thank you. So, Alicia, just to circle back. Mm -hmm. Quickly, um, do you, uh, where did you think that maybe we could talk about um, the FDK, the kinder, the kinder star registration, when people had different ideas? Did you say there was going to be like, a, did you say, a, what, what did you say? Um, so I'm wondering if maybe I throw it out on Twitter. What do you think, Gretchen? Do you think maybe some people might respond to it? Yeah, I think so. Maybe. Like just saying what, you know, what kind of ideas are you having or... Uh, because I do know um, that you guys kind of anticipated Diana like being in schools. And so a lot of people are probably scrambling, like maybe we'll just put some feelers out and see what we can kind of come up with. And then I'm just thinking, how do we share that with you guys? Yeah, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know. I just know that I guess we're all sort of in that same, sounds like we're all sort of in that same boat as to the other piece is that when people are scrambling, some families don't want to share what's in their house either. Like we find, you know, like sometimes it's very invasive that, I, I mean, everybody works all in different areas, obviously across the county, but I'm just thinking of our demographics, our population and specifically that, you know, some are very, you can see them sort of in their own little box. They've got their kid in there and nobody can come in or out when we're on our Google meet. Right. So I'm not sure. I love that idea of the scavenger hunt. I'm, I'm just wondering if that might for some families be more invasive than not, you know, I, but I don't have the, I don't have any other ideas to contribute either. I know we need some type mm -hmm. of an icebreaker sort of thing. I, yeah. We just talked about an icebreaker as a, as a school. We didn't really talk about um, having to do an, we weren't really prescribed that we had to do an activity per se. Mm -hmm. Just more of an icebreaker, to get to know you sort of thing. Yeah. But I love the idea of doing that, some kind of interactive. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, let us do some digging around. Like I'm, I don't know, Gretchen, can you think of anything off the top of your head? I think just keep it simple, really. Like, you know, and I don't know the full message that is being sent out either, though, too, right? So I would say follow the direction from your principal, but really, like, keep it as simple as you can, a story and a song, maybe, or, you know, just asking some questions or, you know the way that we get kids talking right like do you have a pet what is your favorite animal kind of stuff and then get them going or read a book about you know a pet or sing a song about animals and then ask them some questions right like really the kinder start is to you know try to get to know the kids before they come in a bit and just to get them you know excited about coming so mm -hmm. That's a good idea. I like that book idea or, or the song. Most people can relate to music. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Leave that. I'll pass along anything. Um, and maybe yeah. if we do come up with some ideas, I know Tuesday is cutting it close next week, yeah. but we, we definitely can share them if we find anything that might be helpful. Okay. We're the way that we, like, we've got the four different teams, right? So we've split it up into three different. So we sort of have to have a, um, 
script or something that kind of goes along with what's happening. Mm -hmm. But yeah. all right, if we come up with anything fantastic, you know, then That's I will awesome. certainly pass it on. But absolutely, low expectations, ladies. Oh, stop! <laughs> you guys are doing great. Thank you so much for sharing. We appreciate it so much. No, I really like. I know I really enjoy these conversations. I feel like they we're all sort of like in the same boat. Like, why are we not having these types of? Like, I had this situation today where um, one of our um, prep teachers had to get a supply teacher. Mm -hmm. So the link that she so she wanted us to go back and use the link that she had from last week. Yeah, well, it didn't work. So it was me and the prep teacher. Yeah. yeah. That was awkward. <laughs> so <laughs> I got all these parents messaging me saying we can't get in. And then the prep teacher is looking at me like I'm supposed to do something magical. And I'm like, I, I, well, I don't know what you want me to do. But I so clearly there was some kind of technical difficulty there that a new link should have been created so he could have had the host abilities to let people in but I'm like is anybody like knocking on the door there bud like are you letting people in here and he's like I don't see anything and I'm like oh yeah I know this is adorable but to stare at it for half an hour I I don't know I can't help you for sure well we had that same issue with my son's class the poor supply teacher she um you know had created a link and that the teacher used one the same that the teacher had and couldn't let kids in and they couldn't get access to it and yeah it's like a fly by the seat of your pants when you're totally out of your comfort zone it's yeah yeah so yeah. Anyway. anyways yeah I just wish that we we had more of the training piece or the learning piece or you know these these sessions so that we can learn and bounce these ideas off each other mm -hmm. absolutely well for another day ladies yes thank you so much for hosting this this is this is great though for sure thank you okay all i'll right. talk to you soon yeah we'll see you later all right thank you bye bye